spring games are coming to a close here uh, over the next couple of weeks. Yesterday, I uh, watched a couple of spring games. I did a live stream. I watched uh, Alabama and Colorado. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to calmly discuss those two spring games, give you my uh, reaction and what I think it means going forward for those two teams in a very calm, uh, rational, uh, and deliberative manner. But first, a word from today's sponsor. I got to be honest. There's never a bad time to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Now, a shout out to uh, DraftKings, today's video sponsor. I always enjoy working with the good people over at uh, DraftKings. But right now is an especially good time to download the app. The link is in the description down below. You know, the NBA playoffs is getting underway this weekend. And I don't watch a ton of regular season NBA, but I absolutely love the playoffs. I love elimination tournaments in general. I don't watch a lot of regular season baseball or hockey either, but the postseason is unbelievable. And the NBA is the same way. And they're just getting started. The teams are advancing through the brackets uh, right now. They're giving all new customers uh, a great opportunity over on um, DraftKings. All new customers. Uh, download the app. Link down below in the description uh, in the description box down below. Download the app. Place a $5 wager on any pregame money line bet. Win the bet, and they're going to give you $150 in bonus bets. You heard me right. That's literally all you have to do. Pick a game, place a $5 wager before the game starts, a money line wager, hit that bet, and they're going to give you $150 in bonus bets. Now, what can you do with that $150? Well, you can do what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll it over into college football futures. You can bet college football futures on DraftKings Sportsbook right now. They've got national championship odds. They've got Heisman odds. Uh, who do you think uh, got the best odds to win the national title, according to the good people over at DraftKings? You already know. <laughs> anyway, check it out. The link is in the description down below. They have same-game parlays, too. Now, this is a good way... Uh, this is a good way to really try to multiply your winnings. A same game parlay, you can place multiple bets on the same game and turn it into a parlay. Uh, you can bet the winner of the game, the, the, the total points scored, over-unders, uh, points that each team scores, uh, points that individual players score, that kind of thing. Uh, same game parlays, multiple bets on the same game for a chance to increase your winnings. Make sure you check out DraftKings Sportsbook. Like I said, the app is in the, uh, uh, the, the link to the app is in the description down below. Make sure you're using promo code Uncle Lou. They're going to give you uh, a chance at that bonus. Again, place a $5 wager on any pregame money line. Win the bet. They're going to give you $150 in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Promo code Uncle Lou. Link in the description down below. Far be it for me to come on here and, and, and overreact about a spring game. But, oh, Alabama and Colorado are absolutely horrible. Um, we'll start with Alabama. I don't understand how Alabama can put together this many recruiting classes in a row. Something like 10 of the last 13 recruiting classes ranked number one. I mean, they've got the number one talent roster in the country year in and year out every single year for 14 years running. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be the best team in the country every single year, but how is it Alabama has found themselves in a position in 2023 after all these top recruiting classes over the last four or five cycles? I mean, this roster is absolutely loaded with blue chip players, five stars and four stars. They don't have a single quarterback that's any good. Um, Jalen Milrow, Jalen Mildew, uh, Ty Simpson, Bart, you know, Bart Simpson, these two QBs were absolutely horrible yesterday. I don't know if they could have played any worse. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. They looked terrible. Um, more interceptions than touchdowns. The first half was all uh, uh, zero touchdowns, three interceptions in the first half. Um, I think they did end up with a couple of touchdown passes, but still, they just absolutely horrible. Combined, they barely had a 50% completion percentage. Uh, Bart Simpson was something like... 35 or 40 percent completion percentage. Jalen Mildew was barely over 50 percent completion percentage. They just looked absolutely horrible. The dropped passes that plagued Alabama last year. The just think in your mind the the, the string of wide receivers that came through Alabama going back to 2017. Even prior to that, really, if you want to talk about like Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, but I mean. Uh, uh, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, 
Jameson Williams, Henry Ruggs. Where are these people? Never mind the fact that you don't have any first-round draft pick wide receivers, which you've been loaded with over the last five to six years. Forget that. I don't know if you have a wide receiver that's even draftable. Who's the wide receiver? Y'all cannot catch a pass. Alabama led the country last year in drop passes, and that trend looks to continue this year. Drop pass after drop pass yesterday. And it's even more important in 2023 that Alabama's wide receivers learn how to catch passes than it was last year because Bryce Young at least was going to put the ball on the money every single time. Bryce Young's an elite-level college quarterback. We'll see what he ends up doing in the NFL. I, I, he'll probably be successful there too. But he was an elite college-level quarterback that put the ball on the money more times than not. These two quarterbacks you got here, you're lucky if one out of every four or five pass attempts goes anywhere near where it's supposed to go. So when you're the wide receiver and you get lucky and one of these garbage quarterbacks for Alabama actually does make a good pass, you got to catch the damn thing. And they can't catch. They can't catch. The offensive line, what used to be the staple of an Alabama Nick Saban team, just a, an offensive line loaded with NFL players. Looks like we're going to head into about the third year in a row where, they're ter where they can't block anybody. Well, it just means the defense is weak. Well, no, it means your offensive line is terrible again. Again. The only bright spot I saw in Alabama's offense yesterday was a freshman running back, Justice Haynes. He may end up being pretty good. He was definitely the best player on the field yesterday, and he's a true freshman running back. A true freshman running back. How far is that going to take you? Not very far. Not Definitely not where Alabama's looking to go. <laughs> it is an absolute shit show in that spring game yes, uh, yesterday. And look, I saw the comments yesterday. I've read the comments online after the game yesterday and this morning. The Alabama fans coming out of the woodwork with the whole, it's just a spring game, woo. It's just a spring game. It don't mean nothing. If it don't mean nothing and it's just a spring game, then stop talking about Justice Haynes. Stop talking about how good the defense looked then. You can't have it both ways, dummy. Either it's a spring game and nothing you saw matters, or your offense is hot fucking garbage. One of the two. But you can't run around bragging about how great Justice Haynes looked in the spring game yesterday and how amazing your defense is going to be, which I have serious questions about, by the way. Serious questions about how great that Alabama defense is going to be. Is it going to be as great as it was last year when you had Will Anderson and NFL DBs and Dallas Turner and Henry Toto Toto, your leading tackler, and you gave up 52 points to Tennessee in a loss? Is it going to be that great? I mean, so I'm not convinced it's going to be great. But you can't run around telling people the defense looked great yesterday and Justice Haynes looked amazing yesterday. But then when anybody mentions the offense, you go, it's just spring game. Don't matter. Don't matter. Just spring game. Which is it, dummy? Which is it? Alabama, look, whatever opinion you held about the, and, and I believe this to be true for Alabama fans as well, whatever opinion you held about Alabama's 2023 season before yesterday, you have to hold a little bit lower of an opinion now. As bad as I think Jalen Milrow is, and as bad as I know Jalen Mildew looked last year, in the couple of games he played a lot in, primarily the Texas A&M game, but I think it was the Arkansas game too where he came in in the fourth quarter uh, when Bryce Young got hurt. Anyway, he looked horrible, okay? Even I was willing to give a little bit of benefit of the doubt this offseason, and I said, well, he'll get first-team reps all through offseason conditioning and spring practice. He was a first-year player last year. Maybe he'll have improved in terms of throwing the ball. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. He looked terrible. Tell me he could run around. He was sacked about 19 times yesterday. Um, yeah, he, he had an amazing 50 or 60 yard touchdown run. That's great. Um, Anthony Richardson had a couple of those last year too. That's what Jalen Mildew looks like to me. That's what Jalen Mildew looks like to me. Somebody who's going to show up at the NFL combine in three years and dominate the underwear Olympics. That's about it. That's about it. In terms of being a college quarterback that can distribute the ball and get Alabama in and out of the right and wrong plays and sort of conduct the offense down the field, no. Nothing I saw yesterday leads me to believe that. And Bart Simpson didn't look any better. Um, Alabama's quarterback situation is an absolute and total mess. I think we know now that those rumors about Alabama and Tyler Van Dyke were probably true. Uh, they were probably true because Nick Saban, as old as he is, Believe it or not, he's not a dummy. I know that's hard to believe, 
But Nick Saban is not a dummy. And Nick Saban has been watching these two trash cans run around at spring practice pretending to be quarterbacks, and he knows they're not any good. So I would not be surprised at all if there was something to those Tyler Van Dyke rumors. I also would not be surprised at all if Nick Saban and Alabama dip into the transfer portal here in the next couple of weeks and grab a, an experienced veteran quarterback. Because the options they have right now don't look like options that are going to get uh, an Alabama team where it wants to go, which is the SEC title game and then potentially a trip to the playoffs. It is hard to see that happening with the Alabama team I saw yesterday. They look that bad. They look that bad. I've got Alabama fifth in my preseason poll. I had Georgia, Michigan, LSU, Penn State, Alabama, Ohio State. Those were my top six. I could tell you right now, I redo the rankings after all the spring games are done. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going to redo the rankings. If I were redoing the rankings right now, I would definitely move Ohio State up ahead of Alabama. Now, Penn State, they didn't look great in their spring game either. So I may end up having to bump them down a spot or so. But I wouldn't change the first three, Georgia, Michigan, LSU. I haven't watched every single spring game. I'll admit it, okay? I didn't watch. I haven't watched Oregon. I didn't watch much of the Oklahoma game. I could go through a lit. So I'm not going to pretend I've watched every spring game. Of the spring games I've seen or, or practice notes or reports that I've read of or whatever, Georgia and Michigan are the best two teams I've seen this year in spring football. Now, games aren't won in the spring. Conferences aren't won in the spring. Uh, playoffs aren't made in the spring. And national championships aren't won in the spring. That is not what I'm saying. But those are two teams, Georgia and Michigan, that we know were very good last year. Both have a ton coming back this year. And both looked really, really good so far in the spring. Uh, but Alabama, you got work to do. Now on to Colorado. I got ex exactly what I thought I would get from Colorado. Sort of. Um, Colorado's not good. They're not going to be good. Um, ESPN and a lot of these uh, a lot of these Deion Sanders fanboys that are running around, y'all need to pump the brakes because y'all are setting yourselves up for some of the most extreme disappointment the internet has ever seen. Colorado's going to be an absolute dumpster fire this year, Okay. And that doesn't mean Deion Sanders is a terrible coach, and it doesn't mean Shador Sanders is a terrible quarterback. I have not seen people simp on the internet for strangers. I don't think ever, like I see them on the internet right now, simping for Deion and Shador Sanders. Deion may end up being a good college football head coach. But we don't know that for sure now or not. We just don't know. Shador Sanders might have a great year at quarterback. That doesn't mean Colorado's winning 7, 8, 9, 10 games. They are a terrible team. Did you watch them yesterday? It looked like an eighth grade. It looked like a middle school team. They've got offensive linemen that can't weigh 250 pounds and defensive linemen that weigh less than that. They look tiny. Tiny. They got a running back out there. I need to see this dude's birth certificate. There's no way this guy is 17 or 18. He's got to be about 14. They're really, really bad. Travis Hunter looked good on some scripted plays where the DBs well, I don't even know where the DBs were. They must have been on another field, a practice field somewhere else. So, yeah, you know, you throw a couple of, uh, uh, Shore Sanders throws a couple of touchdown passes to a wide open Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter won't make it till October playing both ways if, if, if he's going to play significant amounts of time both sides. It's not going to happen. Um, I, I've got no issues or, or, or whatever with, uh, with HBCUs and, and, and the, the uh, level of college football that they play, I think it's great that HBCUs exist. And uh, I, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't watch a couple of Jackson State games over the last couple of years because of all the Dion and Shador Sanders hype. But I'm here to tell you right now, the Power Five, the Pac-12, that, that ain't HBCUs. Colorado, Colorado's size and their, their, their lack of talent is going to get them absolutely destroyed this year, okay? They're non-con uh, uh, schedule. They play Nebraska and TCU in the first month of the season. Th then they play Oregon. Th then they play like Southern Cal or something. Colorado's probably starting one and four, okay? And then maybe they win a couple of games down the stretch. So they win three or four games. That doesn't mean Dion's a terrible coach. Y'all have got to give him a couple of years to get more players in there. They've got, I think it's, is it seven? They've got a total of seven right now. Five-star and four-star players. Seven. Seven. Team, you, you're big boys of college football. They've got 27 four- and five-star players as backups. I'm sorry. Colorado is going to get ran off the field in the overwhelming majority of games they play this year, and it's not necessarily because of Deion Sanders. They don't have the talent, okay? They don't have the Jimmys and the Joes. 
It's great that Dion got Travis Hunter to go there from Jackson State. It's great that he signed Cormani McLean. It's great that Shador Sanders looks like a pretty good quarterback. Those things are great. That is three good players. Three. Iowa's got three good players on their offense, and they're fucking Iowa. They can't score 17 points a game. Colorado has got a long way to go. And ESPN and the Deion Sanders fanboys that are trouncing around the internet are, are doing nothing but setting themselves up for disappointment come September and October when Deion has to uh, uh, trot this uh, imposter of a football team out onto the field to play games. They are going to be terrible. They're going to be absolutely horrible. They don't have the players. Not in year one. Deion inherited not one of the worst the worst team and program in the entire Power Five, okay? The entire Power Five. They went 1-11 last year. If Dion gets to four wins, that is a success. And honestly, that should be the goal. Three or four wins, five would be amazing. They're not making a bowl game. They're not winning the Pac-12. They're not winning eight, nine, ten games like I see people typing on. It is not happening. I have a very strong feeling, and I can't prove this or confirm this, and I, I don't know if there's a way to prove it. I don't know that I'll ever be able to prove it. I think the overwhelming majority of people who are running around trying to tell me that Colorado is going to be really good and, and contend for the Pac-12 and win nine-plus games, I have a very strong feeling that not only are they not Colorado fans, they're not even college football fans. In fact, I've got a pretty strong inkling and inclination that they don't know shit about college football. They're Deion Sanders fans. And there's nothing wrong with that. You want to be grown and fanboy on the internet for another grown man, Deion Sanders? Be my guest. But it's obvious, Uncle Lou, that if you're running around talking about Colorado being a great team this year and challenging for the Pac-12 and winning 8, 9, 10 games, that you don't know a goddamn thing about college football. Nothing. They're going to be really, really bad. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the country. They're going to be one of the worst teams in the Power Five. You're going to be able to tell that when you watch them play, and you're going to be able to tell that when you look at their record from week to week and the losses start packing uh, start packing up. Their spring game yesterday was unwatchable. First of all, it wasn't a game. It wasn't even a scrimmage. I don't know what it was. At one point during the so-called spring game yesterday, for those of you that didn't watch it, they literally ran seven-on-seven seven drills. No offensive line, no defensive line. You got Shador Sanders throwing the ball to Travis Hunter against air. That doesn't impress anybody. I'm sorry. I can take my 14-year-old son, Lou Jr., out here in the yard and have him catch 15-yard out routes, too. It'll look amazing. It'll look amazing. I can put a shell on him, a fake helmet, and some cleats. That don't make him a, uh, that don't make him a, a, a Power 5 football player. Might make him a Colorado football player, though.